All right, we've got a cool pre-production prototype. So these are under pre-order right now. And this knife is called The Standard. And what I think is pretty cool, and it's from Golden Design, or Golden Design Works, and I will put a link to their website down below. Blaze Golden is the owner, designer, because these are made uh, by Best Tech overseas. What I think is cool, here's a little bit about his company, contact information, all of that stuff really quick. Um, what is cool is he sends out all of the specs. Like, and I, I, I measured everything myself before I looked at this and they're pretty right on. Like my calipers may be off by a hundredth, but yeah, it's basically right on. So that's very cool because oftentimes when I look at a website or I look at a data sheet, things like that, the dimensions are off. Like where are you guys measuring this stuff from? Anyway, that's a, just a, a, a bone of contention I have with makers. And I know one maker who specifically told me, oh, he puts the wrong dimensions on the website so people can't copy his stuff. Because they'll go to the website and they'll find out that the knife is six and a quarter inches, but it's really only six inches or it's really six and a half. Like he literally told me that's what he does. I'm like, that's just stupid. Anyway, I moved on from that maker. So what we have here is called the standard. It is a titanium frame lock, front flipper with a thumb hole. The front flip works fantastic. And I'm not a front flipper guy, but I've had this knife for a little while now. Um, you can spidey flick it, but it's kind of awkward because you're choked up. There's That's the only way to do it is like if you tried to be, yeah, you're just always going to be kind of in that choked up position. You can't spidey flick it and be in this position. Okay. Um, and you can thumb it open. It's a little more awkward. It's not terrible. It's just you've got to kind of rotate your thumb a little bit to get it in there properly. So I don't love I don't love thumb holes in general. I am more of a thumb stud guy if it were up to me. If it were up to me, really I have a thumb stud and a flipper tab because I'm certainly absolutely not a front flipper guy or a spidey flicker guy. Outside of that, let's take a close up look because there's a lot of things to like about this knife. Two-tone bead blasted blade with satin flats. Very cool. This is Magna Cut. Magna Cut is the up and like it's the latest fad material. I, I don't know if it's going to stick around. Is it not going to stick around? We don't know. They have different scales. This is the ripple design. There is a dimple design. And there's different colors. This is the sky cut. This is the, um, what is this one? I'm totally spacing it now. It, it told me over here on one of these cards, this is the smoke color. There is a sky color also. Let's talk about the pocket clip for a minute. Blaze, you did this perfect. There's no screws to hold up to hang up in your pocket. There's one screw back here that goes all the way through. It's keyed in because it's recessed into the G10 scale. And it works amazing in my jeans, especially in the jeans that I typically have problems with other knives fitting in. I have some 511 tactical jeans that I actually have on today. And in the pocket, it's kind of got extra material right there in the corner of your right-hand pocket, specifically to help protect the nigh, the jeans for rum getting torn up from knives. Well, that's a great idea, but in practice, it means I can only carry certain knives with these jeans, but this one works in those jeans, so it's perfect. He has a GD in, engraved on the inside, and you can see here that there is a lot of milling 
to help with lightening this overall knife. All right, so since you probably didn't read all of the specs as I showed the card, let's go through it. It's four and a quarter inches closed, just a hair under four and a quarter. Seven and seven sixteenths overall with a 3.23 inch blade with a 2.75 inch cutting edge. 0 0.017 behind the edge. Their paperwork said 0 0.02. Look, it's hard to get the calipers exactly in the right spot. So the behind the edge, take that with a grain of salt. It's going to be plus or minus a little bit whenever I give those dimensions. The blade thickness is 0.123. Kind of like when that works out that way. It is magnet cut, as I mentioned. Overall thickness is 0.479. Runs on caged bearings and weighs in at 3.8 ounces. I think if you like this aesthetic and you like front flipping, this is a fantastic knife. It's $269 as a pre-order price. I don't know if the price is going to change once it comes out or not. I totally didn't ask Blaze that. I just kind of shoot from the hip, guys. You get true, raw, honest opinions. It's not some, you know, baited commercial telling you exactly what the maker wants me to tell you. It's just never going to happen, okay? Um, there are going to be some changes in the production version. And we'll talk about that real quick. The jimping right now stops about halfway through the thumb hole. It's going to extend all the way to the end of the thumb hole, which I think is good because in my normal grip, I put my thing, my thumb down here and I'm already past the jimping. So I think extending it out to the edge of the thumb hole is a good idea. They are going to soften up the lock bar access which I didn't really have a problem with the lock bar access. I think it's okay. But if, I mean, you can always improve that. It does have a steel lock bar insert, if I didn't mention that. And then they're going to modify some of the internal construction to make assembly and disassembly simpler. Um, in his little thing, he goes, yeah, you can, you know, use it, cut it, don't sharpen it, and don't take it apart unless you have to because apparently it's not the easiest to do assemble and disassemble. I did not take it apart, but I didn't need to. So it is a keyed pivot. So this is not a free spinning pivot. So you just need one T8 for that and one T8 for this. And it's a part or it's coming apart. There is going to be replacement scales so that you can order different varieties. There'll be different colors and different textures and things like that. Because it's kind of a removable scale construction, if you will, this kind of gives some opportunity to the DIYers. If you want to, say, make a carbon fiber one, you could take this apart, you could measure it out, you could get yourself a piece of carbon fiber, you could cut it, sand it, and bolt it in. Or if you've got a friend who's a 3D who owns a 3D printing company, like I do, I could send him the scales or send him the knife and he could take it apart. He could grab these and he could 3D print me glow in the dark scales. <laughs> yeah. This kind of reminds me of the shape and style of the Quiet Carry Waypoint, but with a little more girth on it. So I kind of like that better. I owned a Waypoint for a while. It was great because it was super slicer, because it was super thin, and it's um, corrosion resistance. So I took that with me on my first trip to Hawaii, and it was in my pocket every time I went in the ocean, came home, and it was mostly in perfect shape. There was a little bit of corrosion starting. It was odd, but cleaned it out and put it back together, and it ran like a champ. I think it's a cool knife. I don't really have many complaints other than the opening. I'm not a front flipper guy. The Spidey flick makes you do it so that you're kind of all choked up when you open it. And the thumb opening is a little awkward. I would have preferred a thumb stud. And you can kind of do it as a thumb stud, but you got to kind of think about it. So with any knife, you're just going to have to get a little bit used to how it opens. And all in all, I think it's cool. 
So I'm going to put a link to their website down below. You can go pre-order. You can look at the other options. You can look up some more of the specs or details of the other colorways that they're going to have and things like that if you so desire. So they believe the pre-order date is going to be December. I don't know if you can actually even pre-order just yet. You have to go check the website. I totally didn't check. Sue me. Uh, this is the Kubi KB237. Speaking of slim cutting knives, how about the VC Edge interface? Um, so they say pre-order is mid to late December of 2022 with delivery in mid to late June of 2023. So it is a six month ish long wait once you pre-order. <sighs> Honestly, that's not my favorite way of doing things. Now, if I'm ordering a custom knife, which I've done many, <laughs> obviously I've done a couple of times, I am totally fine giving a deposit. And it's usually about half so that the maker can order the material and build your knife. And six months-ish later, maybe a year, maybe three years later, you get said knife and you pay the balance. Here, you're paying the full price up front and you're waiting six months for an overseas manufacturer to make your knife, come to the States, get QA, QC'd, and then sent to you. It's not the worst thing in the world and it's not the only company that's doing that. I think it's totally fine. Blaze has been great. He's checked in with me. I've checked in with him. Like we've had a lot of conversations. I wouldn't worry about pre-ordering this and losing your money. That's not it at all. Um, it's just not my favorite thing to do to spend money and wait six months to get my knife. That's all. Personal thing. So let me know down below your thoughts. Please go check out his website. Um, tell him I sent you if you reach out to him and that you saw him here. I don't know if there's any other videos on YouTube. I don't know. Whatever. I don't play that game anyway. I just show you what I show you when I can. If it's before or it's on the day that a knife comes out, great. If it's a year after and it's kind of old news, I, I still just show it. <laughs> Thanks, guys.